Welcome to another Way Nice Photos video and this video is going to be about hookless and the benefits of hookless compared to clinches and tubulars because we're seeing the pros moving from tubulars to a hookless type technology and we're also seeing people moving from clincher tires to hookless technology because that is what is being promoted and on some of the brands like Giant hookless rims and tires come standard straight off the floor. So let's roll the intro and let's talk about the benefits of hookless and are they really benefits? Now hookless rims are a rim where the there's no hooks. They're basically the pieces just come straight out from the rim. So it's almost like a square plate. Now there is a little bit more to it because there is some pieces here which help bed the rim. There's like a piece on the tire that has a bigger section that sits very neatly in that little curve section. And usually there's a dimple in the center of the rim that you can help to get the, the tire on the rim because you put the tire bead into that, that well and then it gives you a bit more movement to get it on the other side of the rim to make it easier to get on because hookless and tubeless tires have threads that go around the whole circumference of the wheel that are unstretchable and that's actually what holds the tires on. It's not the, the hooks or the friction of the hookless against that part of the rim. It's actually the instretchable rims that stop it from expanding like a balloon and blowing off the rim. So that's how the technology works. Now, I read all the comments, guys, and if you see a little heart next to that comment, it means that I've read your comment. Now, there may be some that I missed, but generally they're in like a reply thread and I may miss them, but generally I try to read every single comment that's put on there and if I have I'll put a little heart there. So I've seen in these comments that people talk about they've had hookless, they've bought say a giant bike and they've had that hookless from brand new and they haven't had any problems with them and I'm not saying the technology doesn't work but what I am saying is the technology is still in its infancy and they do have problems for quite a few people and if you do get a problem like a puncture that the, the sealant can't fix, then they can be an issue and we can also get damage to the rim, which is what I want to talk about today. Now, the thing that a lot of people talk about is pinch flats or snake bites. They go, look, I've got a hookless rim and I don't get pinch flats or snake bites. Now, that may be true because when you've got a clincher, if you hit a pothole and the tire and tubes compress completely, what happens is, is that tire and tube is compressed hard against the the clincher part of the tire and it damages the tube putting two little holes in it and you get a puncture now if you have a tubeless tire or a hookless tire you don't have any tube to get a pinch flat or a snake bite now if we go from what the pros are uh, using and we go from a tubular to a hookless, which is what's happening, then we haven't got that problem either because tubulars don't suffer from snake bites or pinch flats because there is no rib, there is no hook, there is no uh, upright section like this on a hookless to even hit the ground because all it is is a curved shape that the tire is glued onto. So you don't get snake bites or pinch flats on tubulars. So moving from tubulars to hookless, you really have to ask yourself the benefit there. Now, the thing that worries me about these hookless, and we've actually seen a few, what, how can I say it, there's a, a few incident, that's the incidents of where these hookless have failed, and where I believe this has happened is where you would have had a pinch flat on a normal clincher tyre. What's happening is, is the tyre is actually hitting the ends of the hookless section or the, 
the well or channel. And what it's doing is because of the way the carbon fiber is made, it's creating a fracture and the hookless rim is failing. And we've seen this happen to a few people. And the Zip303s are ones that seem to be suffering from this failure. So instead of getting a pinch flat, what you, what you may actually have instead when you have that impact that hits on the end of the hookless section, you can actually cause damage to the rim. And that seems to be something that is real and does happen. Now, if we also talk about pressures, now a lot of people say, oh yeah, but with hookless and tubeless and all that, we can run them at lower pressures. Now, we've got to be careful what we compare them with because if we compare a clincher that's say a 23 mil with a 28 mil, you can't really compare that because obviously you need to run the, the skinnier tight or higher pressure. Otherwise, you are going to get pinch flats. You have to run a higher pressure. You can't compare the same pressure. But if you're running your tubeless or hookless at a lower pressure, then you're saying that, hey, I can run these at a lower pressure. So just say we, we had a, a clincher tie that had a tube in it and it was 28 mil. And then we had a tubeless or a hookless 28 mil that, and we're saying we can run it at lower pressures. Now, I would probably argue that you probably could still run the clincher because it's there's more volume in the tyre. You could still run it at lower pressure. Now, obviously, there's going to be a point where if you hit a pothole or something, the impact on the clincher is going to damage the tube and you're going to have, again, a snake bite or a pinch flat. But I would probably say you still would be able to run at a typical pressure that you would run a tubeless or hookless because the volume inside is the same. It's only if you are hitting the the hooks or the hookless, they're impacting, then you're going to get that pinch flat in the same tyre, which is then a clincher. And if you are hitting them on the hookless or tubeless, then you could possibly have damage to those hooks or to the hookless section on that rim. So the whole argument of the lower pressures I don't know if that is is really true. And also it's the same thing if you go from a tubular to a hookless or a, a tubeless. You can run tubulars at a lot lower pressure and that's why they actually do run them in competitive mountain bikes. And you can also run tubular at a higher pressure. So the expansion of pressures or the, or the amount of different pressures you can run a tubular at is much greater. The only downside to a tubular tire is the fact that if you have a puncture, you can have a, it could be a little bit more problematic. But if you can't fix the tubeless or the hookless, you probably could have just as much of an issue. So when you look at a hookless or these tubeless and you're looking at the price and the, and the, cost and the seal and everything else, I would probably even argue that the hookless or tubeless could even be as expensive, if not more than a tubular. So there is not a lot of benefits of moving away from a tubular tire. You can run bigger tubular tires on a tubular rim. Now, I know they're talking about rolling resistance, but I've made a lot of videos on rolling resistance. And I think that the difference you would have in rolling resistance between any tyres, unless, of course, it had knobblies on it or something silly. The rolling resistance we're talking about the that you're saving is insignificant. I mean, we're talking about really small parts of a watt. So those sorts of things I don't think would be measurable. And, of course, a much more greater control of variances is the road surface. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. I just wanted to bring people back to the tyres and I don't think there's really a lot in it. If you had exactly the same pressure in the tyres, you had exactly the same tyres, tyre, tubular, clincher, tubular, uh, tubeless and a hookless, you'd probably see the performance would be almost identical. All you'll be looking at is the fact that your tubeless or hookless could give you a bunch of protection and even then, if you don't, if it doesn't fix it, you can have a bigger mess. So they're more the pros and cons of the puncture protection and can you fix a puncture on the side of the road. Obviously, with a tubular, you can't get to the tube, so you need to change the whole tire or put sealant in. With a clincher, you need to take the tube out and repair it or put a new tube in. With the tubeless and the hookless, if you can't fix the puncture, then you might have to put a plug in or a a a 
a patch, not a patch, uh, what do you call it, like a um, a note or something like that inside to see if you could get it to seal. Or you may not be able to seal it and you also got that sealant mess. So that is the issue. But of course, if the sealant fixes it, you're all good to go. You're still riding. So they're the pros and cons. So leave your comments down below. Who's tried the same tyres in the same size and at the same pressures? And have they actually felt any difference that's where I think it would be really nice to see what the differences are because... <laughs> but I do believe that I don't think apples for apples, which is the same pressure and the same size tyre, for all of your, your more racing type tyres, you would actually see very little difference between across the whole difference. The only thing is with the tubeless, they are significantly lighter. Okay, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it, and I will see you next week.